Hello and welcome. Today's guest is a multiple best-selling and award-winning author, sought-after international speaker, and dedicated philanthropist who has raised over $5 million for charity. He is the founder of Industry Rockstar, one of the biggest business training and investing companies in the world. And he is renowned as one of the world's most impactful business mentors. Regularly interviewed by major media outlets, he has been featured in over 300 publications and is a consultant to companies including Sony, Universal Pictures, Warner Brothers, DreamWorks, Apple, and Microsoft. Since 2006, he and his partner Alessia have delivered over 2,000 presentations in 32 countries, and they have taught nearly 4 million business owners, their award-winning sales, leadership, marketing, and business strategies. Together with his industry rockstar senior advisory dream team, they have started more than 60 companies and generated over $2 billion in revenue. Committed to helping entrepreneurs align their passions and their vision, he is on a mission to help conscious business owners grow and scale their companies. Please welcome Kane Minkus to the show. Hi, Ellie. You know, I grew up in a family where it was a lot about you can't do it. You can't be a musician. I remember my dad used to say to me, hey, kid, uh, nobody makes any money in music, so figure something else out. And I would say, well, but there are people that make money in music. And he'd say, like, who? I'd say, I don't know, Madonna, Phil Collins, you know, Peter Gabriel. And he'd say, well, they got lucky. And I realized that there are people that really believe that success in doing what you're passionate about and having a major impact is this element of luck. And I just wasn't willing to accept that because I didn't feel like I got lucky <laughs> today. I am not a gambler because I'll tell you, if I ever gamble anywhere, anytime I lose all my money. So it's not about gambling. To me, it was about how do you actually understand who and what they do and how they think so that you can take what you're passionate about and be really successful. And I think there's this, es this essence of drive for a lot of people when they're told they can't do it or mm -hmm. they're not good enough to do it or it's not gonna work. And there's something intrinsically in them that says, I'm not willing to settle for that. I am going to figure it out. And there's that drive and that commitment to figuring it out. Funny enough, today I have three children and we're extremely conscious about our parenting, consistently uh, offering them great praise and love and encouragement and support so that they develop healthy relationships to themselves and healthy relationships to success. We work with them on money and success and sales and all the things that we are spending you know, endless days recoding for entrepreneurs that didn't grow up in those environments. And yet, there's an interesting double side to that, which is that we actually see, and this is of course very documented for a lot of uh, parenting, is that when you give the kids all the love and the support, they also don't get that kind of burning edge of, you know, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm gonna prove it to others. Yeah. So what we're very fascinated with is how do you create a, a leader, an entrepreneur, a business owner, or a founder of any size company, whether, you know, we work with, with clients um, that are from five figures or just getting started all the way up to nine figure companies. Really, it doesn't matter. To me, it's about human achievements. And when it's put into business, we look at the success patterns and the strategies. But how do you create somebody that is happy, that is complete, that is feeling grounded, that is feeling good about themselves and is driven? Absolutely. I think that's the, that's the million dollar question, right? That's one of the things that really separates people who are stepping into their full embodiment of life, who are taking life by the reins and intentionally creating a life that they love, that life that brings them happiness and joy while retaining that drive to do more, be more, have more, and, and to live more. What would you say to people who say, well, I agree with you, but I'm so afraid of doing the wrong thing. I'm so afraid of making the wrong decision. And so they don't do anything. It's a great question. Um, my wife has this great, my, my wife, I would, you know, she, if she was here, you can, she's just a brilliant woman, an entrepreneur, and I'm so uh, grateful to being with her because we get to share so much. And she's a nine-time serial entrepreneur herself, originally from Italy and from Europe. And so she's a wonderful woman to raise children with as well because we have such alignment on how we frame everything. 
Um, we always encourage the kids to take big risks because we want them to expand and grow. And that's our thing. You know, we grew up in families where everything was like, be careful. Don't take those risks. You can't do that. Now with our kids, we're like, go crazy. <laughs> let's take risks. Go as big as you can. Like, let's see what happens. Consequently, again, it gets complex. When we go out hiking, my daughter wants to climb the tallest mountain. <laughs> Seven years old, we got to yell to her, come down, come down. But she doesn't care because we've built in, take the risk, right? Yeah. So she has a saying, which is that falling is part of the game. Um, I was, uh, my, my sport when I was young was, uh, ice hockey. I grew up in the city of Chicago, so we played a lot of ice hockey. And so I was a big hockey uh, player. And so my young daughter got into ice skating a couple of years back. And of course, ice skating, you get on the ice and the first <laughs> experience you have is you, you fall all, fall, all, fall all over. Right. And, uh, she was a little bit disheartened because it's something that's harder to get started in. You start by falling everywhere. And, uh, my wife gave her this line that falling is part of the game. And that every time she falls, she knows she's in the game. She's learning. She's moving forward. Each fall, each mistake is part of that. You know, the idea of failing, failing to success or all those, uh, you know, synonyms to how we would say this. But we say failing is part of the game or falling is part of the game. And so that's what I'd say to somebody who's saying, I don't know if I'm going to do it right. I'm so afraid to make mistakes, which is a very common thing. And, you know, we were interviewing Richard Branson uh, about um, how he feels about making mistakes or failing. And I think we had about eight or 10,000 people in our audience and, and Alessia was interviewing him and she said, you know, you've done so much successful stuff. What would you say to people that are concerned about failing? And that's why they don't move forward. He says, I'm concerned about failing. He says, I don't like to fail. He says, you know, they, we, they had just had a crash with uh, the Virgin Galactic that had just came back. And he said, you know, when, when people fail in Virgin or Virgin Atlantic or Virgin Airlines or Virgin Galactic, people die. Nobody wants that. Um, but we understand that as much as you do to prepare for success and to make sure you make as little mistakes as possible, falling and failing is part of the game. So you got to decide you're either in the game or you're not. And if you're in the game, then you understand failing and falling and getting hurt as part of it. And if you are not in the game, then, and, if, and it's okay. Like if you don't want to be an entrepreneur or founder, or you, or even if you've been in, some people have been in this, it's not for me anymore. No problem. Find people that you think are on deeply powerful missions and Bring your talent to support them. That's as equally as important as you running your own business. It's not about what you're doing. It's about how you're playing in the game. And sometimes you're Michael Jordan, and sometimes you're supporting Michael Jordan. But either way, the success is not because of one person. It's because of the team. Absolutely. Great advice. So just get in the game. And whether you are Michael Jordan, to your point, or supporting Michael Jordan, um, I love that analogy because each and every one of us has a purpose. You mentioned that earlier, um, particularly uh, in the examples with your children, but each and every one of us has a purpose. And so just getting in there, taking action, being part of the game. Now, you serve at such a powerful level. You are out there day in and day out, truly living your mission. You are a force for good. You are out there um, impacting and advising and mentoring and serving. So how do you refill your cup? How do you make sure that you are able to stay sustained and recharged and recalibrated to serve at that level? Yeah, well, it's, it's a good question. Um, I have a, so I have a lot of things that refill. So it's some just kind of silly little cane things, but um, so first of all, I, I love I love um, changing the dimensional modality for myself because it, it, it has me recuperate. So I liked I love uh, athletics and exercising. I, I work out at least once, if not twice a day. We have a gym at our house, um, and I love to put on trainings. Uh, right now, I'm actually um, in a whole training around uh, financing um, mergers and acquisitions that I'm listening to, um, and so I get to just work out, you know, for 45 minutes and listen to my thing, and that. That kind of recuperates me because I get to contribute to my own education, my own growth, as we were talking about earlier. But I also get to move into a modality of, of physicality. Um, and I spent a lot of years as a young person performing and dancing and and moving. So I, I like I like to change modalities from intellectual into um, you know some sort of a physiological um, and and uh, physical uh, modality. But then I also love things like comedy. I listen to oh my gosh, endless hours of comedy. I love 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 laughing. When I would travel on planes and you know I I would go from, uh, you know, America to Asia every 12 weeks to be running tours or to Europe or going to Australia for 22 hour flights. I'd be listening to, you know, 20 hours of, you know, Robin Williams and George Carlin and, you know, all these great comedians that I love over the years to just always be in it. So I love, I love entertainment and I like to recuperate by doing completely opposite modalities, um, doing things that scare me. Uh, you know, the, the kids love to go, you know, rock climbing. So we'll go out and we'll, you know, we'll do rock climbing gyms and things like that things that I think are really, really different. And that change of modality to me 
helps me recuperate. And then there's the other stuff, spending time with my wife and just being romantic and having fun. And we go out and we go dancing and we're taking, you know, salsa classes or zoo classes or you know, just changing that modality and having dimensionality, playing music. I still love to play music and perform and, and write songs and things like that. So to me, what I would recommend to everybody is to take time to do those things. You know, we meditate and we do, you know, we take time to make our smoothies and all the, and do yoga and to, and just then changing those things and keeping this dimensionality because I think that dimensionality keeps us much more balanced and the balance is what keeps us happy. Absolutely. So I love the programs and services that you offer that help them develop their strategies. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Well, so I absolutely agree. So for the last 15 years, one of the things we have had a lot of uh, people coming through. So We've had, you know, we help um, business owners from launch all the way really up to eight figures is what we say. And then if they want to exit their businesses or if they want to, you know, go public or whatever, then that sort of becomes a different world. So we look a lot at from the launch to eight figure level. And from launch to six figures, we call it launch and grow. And once we hit six figures to seven, we start to actually work with them to scale up. Um, and so we offer training programs and mentorship programs and workshops and seminars and advising to do this. And I think that we've been uh, acknowledged as extremely world class in what we do. I mean, there's a lot of business coaches, a lot of people that talk about it. But having had not only the experience in doing it, because we've started, my wife and I have started over 40 of our own companies, half of which have been eight figures and the other half have been high seven figures. We've done it many, many times. We've coached hundreds of thousands of business owners through our programs and millions, uh, educating them, meeting them, done thousands of private sessions. So we also understand how to translate that. And that's a, that's a different skill set, in fact. Somebody could be really successful. And I've met incredibly successful people. I've spent time with massively successful people like Sir Richard Branson over the years where we've done a lot, a lot of different events with him and all sorts of fun things. And we've learned a lot by observing him, but he's not kind of the, he's not spent his life kind of decoding what he's done and turning it into systems and education and training people. And it just hasn't been his journey. Um, and although you can certainly learn a lot from being around someone so extraordinary, there are people that have taken the time to decode their methods and continue to research methods and turn them into systems that others can consume. And then there's those that are just inspiring to be around. Both great. But what I've learned is that I've learned a lot more from those that have taken the time to structureize things into training programs, workshops, or some sort of transferable, consumable education. So that's what we did here. We wanted to actually allow people not to just look at successful people and wonder or hope that they can break off a little bit of their success or hope that they can get around them. Or, you know, when you ask sometimes very successful people why they were successful, sometimes they have no idea why. <laughs> and they just haven't spent their life being inside of the decoding of it. They've been inside of doing their skill set or running their company. So we've took it upon ourselves to not just be a success ourselves and make an impact, but to really be able to turn those uh, those success systems into tangible frameworks that other entrepreneurs can learn and then apply no matter where they come from. And we've been very passionate about the international landscape. So we have had students and clients from over 80 countries, and we've been in 32 countries a year with our conferences, the U.S. being just one, meaning we spent the rest of the year in 31 different countries helping people from Japan all the way down to Indonesia and Australia and New Zealand you know, and everybody throughout Europe and the Middle East and Africa, anywhere we could get to that we could be helping entrepreneurs and understanding that different cultures and different beliefs require an integration at different ways and different levels. So let's imagine as we start to wind down here that you have come to the end of your life best lived. It's been balanced. It's been joyful. You have impacted billions of lives for generations to come. You have uh, played full out. You've left it all on the court. What do you want them to say about you? Mm. Um. I want them to say, I don't need him anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's actually one of the things that I would say to my clients and my audiences is that I want to get to a point where you don't need me anymore because I'm not here in this business to be a coach that's needed. I'm here to share the wisdom and the systems and the abilities so that it becomes integrated into you and can then get advanced and evolved into something else that can go on. So a little bit like a songwriter, I was, I spent, you know, 20 years in music and songwriting and, and producing. And to me as a songwriter, we would channel through the artistic, the creative, and then we would give it away. And I look at that almost like children, like at some point, my children don't need me. Yeah. My seven year old, my daughter is so confident. She seems not need me already. Right. And I'm like, yes, we won the game more day nights. Um, but to me, I, work with entrepreneurs as if I'm raising my own children. They need to become self-sufficient and not need me 
if they want to come to me and, and continue to bounce ideas or have that mirror or that outside, you know, that's very valuable, but they don't need me. And so what I would love billions of people to say uh, by the time I'm done is uh, he came, he saw, he conquered, and he left. And now I will carry that torch of whatever he was talking about. Because it's not about Cain, it's not about me. It's about the things we're bringing through our, our bodies, our voices, our thoughts, our minds, our souls, and then sharing that, evolving it, putting our touch on it, handing the torch, like the Olympic torch, off to somebody else and letting them run with it for the next you know, generations. And so it is. And so it is. Now, how can people get in contact with you? How can they learn more about your programs and um, the things that you do? Sure. I mean, all the classic uh, sort of social media ways that we're active on, you can certainly reach out to there. Our, our assistants and teams check all their messages and things and send us uh, things that seem like they'll be great partnerships and, and people who want to be part of our programs. Also, just watch online for our programs. Look us up on our website at kananalessia.com or you know, come find our mentoring programs. If what we're talking about here seems to resonate with you and you're saying, you know, I'd love to have people who get the integration of the conscious and the systems, the strategies and the heart then just come find us. We're pretty visible online. You can find what we're doing, find our books, find our programs, uh, find us for advising and things like that. And then let's talk because we love working with great people. And uh, although we like to take a lot of time off and spend it with our kids these days, uh, we also love to continue to work with really heart-centered and driven entrepreneurs. Uh, any parting words you'd like to share? Yeah. Um, so the, the, the part, I mean, the, the phrase that always comes up for me is just do it, man. <laughs> Like spend or, 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 you know, I don't mean to say man, but like, just, you know, just do it, you know, just, just do it. Like just take these actions. I can't say how many um, friends or colleagues uh, or family members that I've had to spend years convincing to move on from something that just wasn't really feeding their soul. The, the pouting words is there will always be the, the, the action you take will always create a better next step. So if you're worried about whether the next step is the right step, the answer is yes. Just go do it. And you will, by design, I have never heard anybody that has really taken life by the horns ever said, oh, I wish I didn't leave that marriage I wasn't happy with. I wish I didn't leave that company I wasn't enjoying. I wish I didn't leave that situation. They always said, I'm so glad, and I wish I would have done it earlier. The number one thing I heard when I would be sitting in transformational seminars at 18 and 19 years old, just because I got introduced to them early, is I wish I would have done this when I was your age. And I didn't know what that meant because I was so young, but I promised myself, I said, you know, if so many people are saying this to me, I should pay attention and I'm going to live my life so that I never look back and say, I wish I would have done that. Just do it. Just do it. Whatever it is, just do it. Just do it. Thank you so much for being here. To our audience, whatever it is, just do it. Get started. Take that action. Till next time. Thank you.